topics in a um, 2019 series of um, AMT webinars. Uh, I've got with my, uh, this is James Butler, by the way. Uh, I've got Clinda, um, who's just joined us um, beginning of last, uh, beginning of next year, this yeah. year. <laughs> um, Kalinda's, uh, so she's one of our SharePoint experts. Um, I'm going to talk you through some uh, modern experience web parts that AMT Evolve have built, um, and then Kalinda's going to show you a bit about some of the new column formatting that's, uh, that's available. Um, I think Colin's uh, sitting here to, to take some questions and things like that, and we are recording this as well. So, um, it's, like I say, it's the first one of a, a series um, that's coming up in this year. We would welcome some feedback of uh, anything you'd like to see, particularly on the modern experience. So feel free to suggest things you'd like us to cover in the next webinars. Uh, Kalinda's got a few that she's planning on, um, and we're aiming to do at least once a month. One a month. Um, so, crack into the next some of the demos. Yeah, so um, uh, there's a list of um, demo um, modules that we're, we're going to through. Um, we, we've taken the, uh, Microsoft have got some uh, good, uh, useful uh, web parts uh, that they've actually created. Um, and um, where possible, we, we use those a lot and uh, try and extend um, some of the web parts where we we want to sort of properly extend them um, with a lot more useful information. Um, so some of these things I'm going to show you now. Sorry? Okay. Um, some of the things we're, we're going to be focusing on really are just where we've got some enhancements over what Microsoft have done. Um, so you'll see here, so we've got a, a, what's known as a tiles module. Um, now Microsoft have got a, a tiles module uh, already. Um, we've created a, uh, a nicely enhanced one. Um, so if I show you some of the tiles in here, um, so you can see first off that we've we've got some tiles here. Uh, we've got different colours. Um, you can have different colours for each individual module. Uh, you can also have some graphics uh, images which uh, Microsoft don't uh, don't provide. Um, so some of the key selling points are that um, you can you can customise the actual individual colours for the individual tiles. Um, Microsoft, you have to have a flat colour across the whole lot. Um, to edit a module, it's very, very simple. They go into edit mode on the, the new modern experience. Um, should just point out to, to actually add the tiles in the first place, it's very, very simple to do. You basically just add a web part in, you search for the word tiles, and you add the, the hub v2 tiles. I've got that already on here, so I'll just crack into this editing page. So first off, if I go into the editing page here, you can see you can choose how many tiles you want to appear on the, on the page before you go into, into separate numbers. So you can see there I've asked for two, or I've asked for three, so it's nicely configurable. Um, we've also got the ability to actually go in and just do things like specify the font size, specify whether we want border, borders around the outside, what colour you want for the border, whether the hover is enabled, so you can see here now there's no hover. If I turn the hover on, you'll get the hover. We've got some nice things, so you can actually decide where you want the hover, how to, the hover to come in from, left, right, and so forth. And you can uh, specify colour for that, that hover pop up as well. So you can see a red colour coming through. You can also select you want the, the title to appear in the actual hover scroller as well. So at the moment it just says site alerts as well. Um, and now it just says site alerts. So that's really configurable, and all that you don't get with the Microsoft standard tile. If I then go back and actually configure the tiles, um, Microsoft have got something called fabric, uh, sorry, UI fabric icons. So these are icons you can actually go and have a look at. So if I show you these fabric icon pages, it's very simple. They'll load eventually. And you can do a search for icons, um, or you can hover over, and all you need to do is copy the word, the title of the individual icons. So if you've got an icon um, uh, in here that's useful, then you can very easily use that. So if I go in and configure my files, you can see here, so you basically we've got some fields. So Microsoft provides some of these as well. So Microsoft provide um, the title, they provide the description, and the URL, basically. Uh, and they also um, provide the Fabric UI icon here. Um, so you've got uh, um, the, the details in here, so you can see that this is actually bringing in a phone uh, icon. Um, so these are the names of those Fabric UI icons. Um, the next version of this tile will actually have a picker on there as well, so you can just pick it straight from the page. 
Some of the enhancements we've then made are you can actually choose to say have a background image. So you can see if you look at any of these tiles, there's no background image. But those tiles that I showed you that are the graphic tiles, um, you're just putting a link directly into the tile. And then on the tile, ba tile basis, you can choose the background color for that tile, the font color, the contour, the, the color of the, the tile icon. Um, so that's the fabric um, UI icon. You can target um, either the current window or a new window. And you can choose what the order it is. So if you want to reorder it um, once you've got in there, you're not having to, to add more details in. And it's a simple matter of filling those details in and clicking save. So that's really, really useful. Um, and you, we've got customers that have that as a, a main gateway entry into their pages and things, but also where they're using tiles quite heavily um, in subsites and document libraries and things as being old navigation tiles. So that's just a nice, um, fairly functional way, but this is just a, not meant to look pretty, but gives you an idea that you can actually use sort of graphics with rounding corners and that sort of thing. If we come on to one of our other modules, so actually I'll go back in and discard those changes. Uh, next we come on our phone book. Um, so the phone book uh, is very powerful. Um, it's uh, it's very easy drag and drop. Um, so you literally drag and drop the, the phone book into the page. Um, and it pulls all the information straight from uh, the Azure Active Directory, um, including all the Delve profile information. Um, so that's the information about you, any keywords and everything that you get from your, your Delve profiles. Um, so we call it a phone book, but it's more of a sort of staff directory can it, can, can, because it can be used for a multitude of different uh, features in terms of actually searching and where you can search on keywords and things. So the main functionality of the site um, is you've got the contact details of the person. Um, you can choose what fields you want to what would display, uh, phone numbers and emails and things linked directly into the individual people. If they've got some photos, they'll show. Uh, you can see we've got 355 records here. If I search for James, it's my name, it'll come in and filter by um, all the people with the name of James somewhere in there. Uh, we've got a nice advanced search, so we can actually use the keyboard search. But here, you can order the, these details in here, but you can actually get some refiners in there. So here, you've got the traditional refiners, so you can search by job title, um, department, uh, an office location down the bottom here. But you can also search by all things, all these keywords which come from your skills. So, for instance, if you've got staff um, that have got a job title, they've got a location, but they also need to go, um, you, know, you may have an individual who's the first aider or the health and safety person for a floor in a building, then you can actually use the Delve profile keywords to actually record that information. And then you can have that in this keyword search here. So, across the whole organization, call my first aider filters on that, that person individually. The other nice thing about this module is that you can actually go and configure it. So if I go into go back to 355, if I now go in and add, edit that module, um, you've got a few standard settings for layout, decide how many columns you want that field to be, and then you've got a nice color picker so you can pick all sorts of different details. So you've got um, background colors, text colors, primary colors. Um, I'll go and take that off. Um, I'll just point out again with general with uh, modern experience with SharePoint, the nice thing is that it actually shows you, as you make the change, it shows you live in the screen. Uh, you can then decide what you want to um, show. So if you want any missing fields, it won't show them. Um, missing phone numbers don't show. Um, you can sort it, um, and then you can decide um, whether you add some refiners in here. So we've got some standard refiners in here, so you can refine it by department, job title, or um, email addresses, so at companyxyz.com, um, and you can choose whether that's an and or an or. Um, that's really useful because it means that you can actually then go in, and this is our general cent central phone book, but if I go into my, my finance site, Uh, 
So we did the navigation case. I can use the same module, but I can um, use those providers. So here you can see I've got the same phone book, but it's just automatically filtered by where department equals finance. Um, so there's my, my finance team. So you can just open and drop, drop that, that one module in lots of different pages, filter it. So it could be departments, it could be you create a project page, and there's XYZ people working on the project. As long as you can filter in that way, then you can actually drag those and you've got instantly the, the contact. So that's nice and powerful. Some of the other modules I'll quickly do. Um, we have an alerts module. So Microsoft have an alerts module which sort of comes up uh, at the top here in this main banner and adds a little layer in there. We have a module that's got nice little icons and things um, and just scrolls through. And if we go in and edit that module, you can see that we've got um, the information about whether they should be hidden on first node and you can decide what sort of style you want, so whether you want to fade or a slot. So I'll change it to a slide. And very similar to the, um, the tiles menu, um, you put some text in, you can have a link in there, you can have a link to the URL, and then we've got some categories, uh, categories here, so you can actually select some different categories. Those categories dictate what the icon is on the left-hand side, and also the color of the block. Uh, finally, you can actually put in a start and an end date for those as well, and the alert will only uh, run depending on those two dates. Okay, if we come back to our world clock, our time zones. So Microsoft have got a, a world clock time zones. Uh, companies with um, you know, offices in other countries can find that quite useful. Um, so if you go into our time zone clock, um, so again, Microsoft provide a fairly simple one. Um, ours is a little more um, flexible. So here, if I go in and edit, um, this way I can configure my time zones. You can add in as many as you want in here. So main cities are listed in here, um, and the time zones relevant behind them. Um, and you can add as many as you want in there. You can decide how many clocks you want in the page. So you can actually go and select how many you want, up to six. And then you can also, again, with the color peckers, you can actually go and change colors. I'm not an artist, but it's fairly easy to use. And it uses hexadecimal colors, or so you've got sort of company um, standard um, styling sheets and things, you can use those details. And you've got a couple of different options in terms of showing, so you can actually choose to show the the um, title only or the um, full tone. So you can see here I'm showing Europe London. If I turn it off, it'll just show that you're in London. Uh, and you've got a couple of different layouts of the actual mm -hmm. clocks, including a digital one as well. So as you can see on that one, uh, that's actually applying to the whole block. So you're getting a standard face. Uh, you can, of course, I've got columns in here. So I've got a, an Africa clock in here. I can actually go in and add in time zone in here. And then I think we could figure that one. Um, I won't waste too much time on that, but that means that actually you can go and add multiple clocks in your page and actually have different colors for them as well. Um, so the, the one above here, all the colors that you apply and the styles apply across the board for all of them. Um, or you can go in and add separate ones, and then you can individually style and color those. And the final thing I didn't show you on this one particularly is um, you can sort of um, change the size of them. So if I go in and edit this one, you can actually change the size of the clock to, to whatever you want. Uh, again, not a feature that Microsoft has got on their, on their clocks. Right, um, I'm now going to hand you over to Kalinda, um, who will take you through some of the column formatting um, that she's been working with. Okay, thank you, James. So I'm very excited about this new feature that um, Microsoft has introduced. It is a uh, ability to very simply format a column with different colors or different uh, icons or images. So. 
Um, there's two ways to do it. There's one that's a design feature that was just recently added, and then there as well as a web part uh, called column formatting, which is also very simple. And for someone like me who's not a developer, um, but comes from the records management, document management side of things, this is very exciting because also not only does it allow somebody like me to simply do it, but it also allows the end user to do it. Now, one thing to be aware of if an end user is doing um, column, form, column formatting, this will appear on all views. So it's not something they can just apply to their view. It is applied to the column. So for example, in this library, um, this design feature is possible right now on choice columns and date columns. But don't worry, um, with the column formatting web part, you can actually uh, format very easily text, um, person, number, and many of the other types of columns. So as you can see here, I have two columns currently formatted with color coding. One is a document type choice, and the other one is a classification, a security classification type. But the colors are fairly similar. You know that they're not very easy to differentiate. So I'm just going to simply show you how to use the design feature. You click on the little arrow beside the column type, go into column settings, format this column, and this pops up. Now, how exciting is that? So click on Edit Template, and right away the data is pulled from the column, which are your choice items. You click on the color um, palette, and you can change it to this. Now, there's not a massive range of colors, but there's, you know, there certainly is more than there was available before. So let's try and make these a bit different than our classification column. So we'll make plans that we'll do procedures. Let's do procedures in this green. I love how it's instantaneously uh, visible as well. We'll do policies dark red and we'll do reports. Let's see, we'll do reports a nice, um, let's do it. So you just click on apply and right away you have, you know, very different looking columns. So that's the design feature and like I said, it's available on choice and date. I'll show you what it can do for dates in a second. Um, now this column was modified or uh, formatted by using the column formatting um, web part. And I'm just going to show you what this looks like. Still access how to format it through this method. But what you see here is the JSON code. For those people who are able to do that, it's handy. You can just edit it simply here. But it's great. You can also switch to the design mode, which is what we just showed you, simply by clicking on design mode. But be aware that the column formatting will be lost when you do that. So my advice is just simply copy and paste the JSON code if you're not sure you want to lose it. And then if you want to try the design code or the design mode, go for it. And if not, you can simply paste that back in. So I'm not going to change that, though. Uh, this is also pretty exciting. On the modified date, if I just simply, again, use the design feature, click on the little arrow, column settings, format this column, edit template. And this comes, this modified field or column comes with preset things. So what is modified before today? What is modified today? And what is modified after today? Now, I'm not exactly sure how that column grabbed that info because it's always today, or at least today is today. But um, anyway, as you can see, bulk of my material has been modified before today, and then a few have been modified. So even if you don't want to keep that, it's actually a very handy tool to just check what's been modified currently. So I'm not going to I'm not going to apply that now. But that's what modified date uh, field does. So that's simply using the design feature that Microsoft has recently introduced. Now I'm going to show you the web part called column formatting. So this is a web part that you install. You put onto a page, and then the page just sits in your background. So you do have to go into site contents to access it. But wow, is this easy. Now you can open up and use you know, columns that are already formatted if you want to change them. But what we're going to feature today is the new function. So you simply click on the new. And here is your column types or your column types. Now choice, lookup, and text all have the same options of what how you can format it. So you can start a flow, you can have a tiny map, and I'll show you some of those. The severity rating and a Twitter pick. So if you have a <clears throat> excuse me, a Twitter handle within that column, it'll um, it'll show the little pick there. So um, I'll just walk you through some of these. Date and time, a flow, whether it's overdue or an overdue task. Hyperlink, this is handy. You can add a little link to do an action. A quick action icon will appear. Again, a flow, or you can mail to somebody, email, send them an email through a quick link. Lookup, like I said, has the same as choice. Number, we're going to demonstrate um, these later, but 
trending would be based on two columns. So if you have, let's say you're um, comparing this year's sales to next year's sales, you would have to have that data pulling from both columns. And then you'll have a little icon showing, um, you know, whether it's going up or down. I'll show you how to do data bars and donuts as well. The severity one is available here and as the others, you can start a flow. Person, current user, this identifies who the current or highlights the current user. Mail to, this is where you can mail, launch an email or instead of having the person, you can have their image there. So instead of their name, their image would appear in the little round picture. Picture is very similar, flow or you have the, the picture of it instead. Text was the same as choice and num uh, choice and lookup and yes and no simply you can have a checkbox or again start a flow so i'm going to do a quick demo on one of the number ones because i think these are really neat so this probably is more likely to be used in the list than a library but you never know you may have a library where you have number fields so i'm going to select the data bar one and then just click ok so this is what you see immediately. Now you need a low range and a high range for it to compare to. I've selected 1,000 on my list that, oops, that I've uh, created. You can show the actual values within the bars. You can show the percentages, or you can show none. We'll just show the actual value. Now for those people who do know coding and you want to see it, you can simply the code, or you can see the wizard image as well as the code beside it. So if you, you know, you can do this, you can go in, change the code and see the results here. And this little happy face, this is fantastic. If they're happy and things are going well and the code is right, that stays green. If it's not, it turns into a frowny face and I've turned it into a frowny face several times. So it's very easy to then apply that to any particular column or library. You can of course save as, you can download it, you can copy it to a clipboard, you can save it to a local library apply to an entire site column. Now that can be helpful if you know if you have columns that will need that applied to across your across your site collection. Or what I'm going to show you and what we're going to do is apply to a local list field. So simply click on that and then automatically you get to pop up. And we are going to send it to the sales target demo and I'm going to apply it to current sales number. Click save. Go to my, oops, this one, refresh the page, and voila, there you are. So that is as simple as that. Now, to show you the difference, this is the same data, but displayed in a donut. And I'm going to quickly show you how you can do the donuts because you can change the colors on these things. And it's, in my opinion, a little more visually pleasing than this. So quickly go back to the column formatting. And to clear this, it's already applied. It's going to stay applied to that column. You just click on new. Click yes. Go back to new. Select number. Select donut. OK. And this is how it appears here. So again, I'm going to apply the same value. 1,000 is my upper limit. And you can put any numbers in there that you wish. This has a few more options than the column one does. You can actually change the color. So let's say we want, uh, da, da, da. let's go purple, my favorite color. And da, da, da. teal, maybe not the best color combo. But you can show percentage, show actual value, or show none. Let's do that. Again, same, um, same process, apply to local list field. Select your list. I'm going to do the same one. Select your column. Current sales. Click save. And go back to that page. Refresh the page. And there it is. So it's very easy to do this. And if you want to clear it, you can simply even clear it from this, um, this page right here, column settings format this column, and you would simply delete the code and press save. So it's very simple to do. Now I'm going to show you a few of the other things that are available with this column formatting in just in the different views that I've already created in this library. So for instance, you can show something that's overdue. And that just shows everything in red that's overdue. 
another great feature is you can have a little map. If that's something relevant, this is great. So currently you have the sales for this company, but if I want to know where this company is, I just change it to that. I've grouped it by the country, and look at that. You now have a visual representation of the sales and the location right there. I just think that's fantastic. And you can click on that, and it will take you to Google Maps. So that's another great thing. Um, just again, I'm going to show you a couple of the other views within the library that you can do. The severity one, this is that comes directly out of column formatting. And this is based on whether you're, you know, it can be a activity or it can be a document done in progress, in review, has issues blocked. So that, that can be very handy on project sites um, or project uh, libraries or lists and things like that. And that comes straight out of column formatting. You don't have to you know, do any additional thing. I just changed that because, like I said, my background is records management. Security classification of documents is very important. And so I wanted to add a visual representation of that. You know, green is public, confidential is orange, secret is red. This was just out of the box, so I didn't change it. But I'm sure I could change that if I went into design mode and change the background color for that. And it comes with the icons. And when you actually do this, you can choose to have the icons or not. I'll just show you one more example of uh, how easily this is done. Let's select, um, let's select, let's just say person. So if you don't want to have the person's name on one of their, uh, on well, where the names appear, you can actually have their image. So round image, person, OK. And oh, I don't know if I have anything that was modified by James. So. But anyway, if I did, that would all show up there. Um, his picture would show up instead of the name, so that's really handy. i do one more. And do, I'll show you how you can simply, oh, here's another one too, if you wanted to mail that person. Click OK. And then you could have, you could have a different subject. So whichever subject you want, then you just put in the body, whatever you want. So, dear uh, Colinda, sharing is caring. Let me just take that. That's what came out of the box. Um, you know, it could be please do this when you receive this email and all the rest of it. And then there's actually loads of um, icons that you can choose from as well in the other options. So, again, you just save as. Apply to local list or field. I'm going to just put it into the column formatting library. Into the, I'll do the modified, save, go back there, and refresh. Let's see. And now you have a little mail icon that you can click on, and that would take you into Outlook to open or to send the mail. So those are just some of the features of the design feature that you can access very easily for choice and date. And then this lovely column formatting web part that's as simple as clicking on a few buttons and choosing what you want to come up with a much prettier display, um, a much more practical display for some things, um, and also gives the user the ability to do this as well instead of having to get it done by a developer or somebody with more technical information. So thank you very much and I'll get it back to you James. Thank you Kalinda. Um, I hope that proved useful. Um, the, um, just to remind you all of this information, um, the, the, the starting point of these is basically a, a single uh, um, app part um, file um, that you simply give to your IT department. They upload it into your, your SharePoint app catalog um, and then able on that little uh, I was selecting tiles, phone books and that sort of thing, um, which is obviously an end user feature. So IT admin, I, sorry, come back on me. Um, so IT admin, um, go and install that file one time only. Um, so if you're interested in any of our modules and things, we would literally just send you the, the actual module file itself. 
and uh, IT install it once, um, select that it's available across the organization or depending uh, per site collection, um, and then all your users will be able to go and play with those files. So, like I said, I hope that's uh, useful. It's uh, early in January kicking off, um, but we'll be uh, publicizing a, uh, a sort of a suite of a, a few webinars coming up. Um, like Linda mentioned, she's her background is records management, and uh, so we're, we're hoping to introduce some of those uh, those features and things um, at the next webinar. Thanks.